hey, this is a walkthrough of the candle lab for the linear data. Um, it's going to be a walkthrough, but it's not an entirely complete walkthrough. There's some parts of the experimental design we want you all to sort out yourself. Um, so some things are going to be left out. There's going to be a few questions to answer before you actually go through doing the procedure yourself. So as we walk through, um, think about how you would deal with things like uncertainty, things like the sources of uncertainty throughout this lab. Um, because there, again, there are questions to love. So we need 20 birthday candles. And we'd like them to be in uh, arranged in groups by color. So I have that here. I have two pink groups. Um, but then I have a blue, a green, and a yellow. And now I got these candles at the dollar store in these packs, and they're packs of 18. We need 20, uh, so I had to get two packs. I actually got third, or I got a third so I could show you a complete. But get whatever kind of candles you want. It's nice if they're colored because then it's easy to separate them. We're trying to calculate the burn time of these candles, so we want them in groups by length so that we can burn different lengths of a birthday candle and see how long that takes. And then we'll just find a final, we can calculate a final burn time. So I have five groups and I'm going to leave one group alone, leave them at full length, and then I'm going to cut all the other groups to new lengths. So I'm going to get my scissors. Right, so I'm leaving one group at full length. I want to cut a group, one group to three quarter length. I want to cut a group to half length. And I want to cut a group to a quarter length. There's a nice little segments. And we have one more group left. And I think that there, we think that there's going to be more variation in the shorter candles versus the longer candles. So let's have another group for a third. So we'll cut them to three quarters, one half, one third and one quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Great, there's my three quarter group. I want to do my one half group. Something to note um, that we that we have to deal with when we do uh, data analysis is that these candles will, are not all cut exactly the same. And they're really not cut flush. See that? Um, they're a little slanted or they have these little bits curling up of wax. So we're going to need to measure these candles because we want to know the burn time. So we need the burn length. Or sorry, we don't want to know the burn rate. So we need the burn length and the burn time. So we're going to need to measure these. And we're going to need to figure out how to measure these effectively due to this uneven bottom, um, due to the fact that they're not all the same length, and due to the fact that we have a taper on the top. You see that, obviously. This top piece of the candle likely won't burn at the same rate that the rest of this candle will. So we'll have to deal with that too. Anyway, this is our three quarter group. Let's go and we'll cut one half. There's our group that are cut to half length. Now we want to cut this section to a third of the length of the full candle. Oh yeah, make sure when you're cutting these, you're cutting the base off. We don't want to cut the top off because you still want a, a wick that we can light. So it's important we cut the base off, not the top. Anyway, on to the next group of a third. Great. There's our group with a third. We're getting small now. But that's good because we want a lot of variation in our data points because we're going to try to extract a line, and that line will be our burn rate. So three quarters, 
one half, one third, these will be one quarter. So half, one half, okay. Great. We have all of our candles cut. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with for candles. So, I got my four piles. My fifth pile is my candles still at full length, and we're saving those till the end. So don't touch your candles, your fifth pile of full length candles. I only had four colors, so mine are pink too, just like my third, but we're saving these till the end. So we want these, we have our candles, and now we need a candle holder, all right? Why not just get a cake, huh? Um, well, if you want to eat your cake after the fact, there'd be a, little, a lot of wax on it, considering our experiment. So, instead, so, I have this aluminum tray that I got at the dollar store, the same place I got my candles. Um, and this aluminum tray is holding dirt and it's gonna hold our candles. It's really, really, really important. We don't use a cardboard box or we don't use styrofoam. We can't use things that are flammable. So that's why I got this tray. I got some dirt from outside and I picked the rocks out. Um, and actually I haven't done the last step, which is gonna be pouring a little bit of water on top. We'd like our dirt to be a little bit wet so that when the candles burn down to the ground level in this tray, um, when they burn down to ground level, we want them to fizz out a little bit. We want the candles to fizz out so that their burn length will be their total length minus the depth in here. All right, I'm trying to do a good job mixing it up. I'm gonna put a little bit more water to make a little muddy mixture. Now, so if we don't have access to sand or dirt, um, then you could go ahead and use something like flour or cornstarch, but when if you use flour or cornstarch or anything that's made out of carbon, right, um, you have to be really careful and you really do want to wet it. Um, if you don't wet your flour and something bonks on the side of your tray while you have a candle that's lit, you'll see, you, you could see an explosion or just a big plume of flame from the cornstarch or from the flour um, or whatever. And you wouldn't like to see that. We really want to keep houses not burned down um, for this experiment. All right, so I got my dirt nice and wet. I'm going to actually wash my hands before I move on to measuring. All right, I have dry hands. Um, I have a little paper towel. I'm just going to pat this out. I want it to be nice and even. I want one consistent depth in this tray. Great. Now, if we take an accurate measurement of this depth here, then when we measure all of our candles, that's all we need to measure, because then we can take that the length that they burn will be the full length minus the depth. And that's because we're going to push these all the way down to the base of this tray. So what could we use? Well, I have this cut off piece of candle here, and I can just stick it into the dirt all the way to the bottom. And I can see it gets a little bit dirtier. I can use my nail or even mark it off with a pen. Good. So I have this dot, if you can see it on my yellow um, candle, I have this blue dot for my blue pen and I can measure the depth and I'll get depth. And then I can measure my candles, I'll get candles and I can jump into a spreadsheet and I can get all my data in there. Before I jump over the spreadsheet, um, I just want to stick these candles in. I want to show you what kind of arrangement we're looking for. Because actually, I'm not going to light these candles with you all. Great. I have my dirt cake all decorated. This is the way I'm setting mine up. You can set them up however you want. Oop, I just lost one. Um, but you want to make sure that you have enough space. I might actually end up spacing these out a little more. You want to make sure there's enough space in between the candles so that their flame doesn't melt the other candles. Um, anyway, I'm going to take the measurements of all these candles, um, and I'm going to get 
a good measurement of the depth in this tray, and I'm going to put them all into a, a spreadsheet so I'm ready to light these in time. Now. Great. I'm in a blank sheet now, and I'm going to get my table set up. I want group and color, Ooh, not a question mark. That'll be my first header. I want my next header to be candle number. I want a header for raw candle length. I want one, oh, in this, we want units. We're going to take these in millimeter. Awesome. So this is kind of all we know now. So we have four groups of four. So we know that we have candles one through four for each group. So we want these cells to all be one cell. We'd like to merge them. That's what it's called in um, Google Sheets or in Excel. So we want to affect the format. So we highlight them. We click Format. And we can go to Merge Cells and Merge All. Great. So now we have just one big cell here. We want to do that for all these. Great, so now we have four groups and colors. So for group and color, we're gonna call our longest group, the three quarter length, um, we're gonna call group B because we have group A as the long uncut um, group. So let's have group B, their three quarter length, and their blue. Mine are blue, yours might not be blue. So. If we put that text in the cell, it goes to the bottom and it keeps going past this line, but we can't see it past the line where A is. So we can fix that by going using these two buttons. We're going to use vertical line first and we're going to center it. And we're going to go to this text wrapping and we're going to have the text come to the bottom. Because we just made these big cells, now we can use the whole size of them. And let's do that for. Group C, oops, C, that's one half length, and they are green. Let's do that for this whole column. So we can have center line, and we can have wrapping. Group D is one third length. and it's pink. And see we have our formatting in there perfectly. Now we have group E, they're one quarter length, and they are yellow. Awesome. Now we gotta input the raw candle length. All my candles are measured, and I have their data in here is raw candle length. And now I'm going to um, play with the formatting a little bit and fix this up. So I would like these top headers to be bold. And I want to put borders on here, um, horizontal borders, so that this can be read more easily and they look more like four groups of four. So this one here, the window button, uh, is borders. And we want horizontal ones. So I want one on top of this, and I want one on bottom of this. And that's cool, because then I get to go every other one. I can do top and bottom, and I just need to put bottom here. Awesome. So I have some nice lines here. Um, 
And now, but I don't have everything that I need to have in my table. Um, I need to have the burn length for the candle, and I need a column for burn time. And those will be D and E. Um, but I'd like them. I'd like them to still have these lines, and I'd like them to still be bold in the top. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it here. And here, I'm gonna have to go in here. I gotta get all these numbers out. Um, but I still have my underlines and my bolds, so I don't need to do my formatting again. I just need to put in my numbers and my headers. So instead of raw candle length, this is gonna be candle burn length great and instead of raw candle length on e we want burn time oops and we want it in seconds great so I measured the depth of my dirt and I came out to about half a centimeter or five millimeters. So that means that the candle burn length is going to be this raw candle length minus five millimeters because the candles are going to burn to um, the ground level in the tin, in the pan, and then they'll go out because they'll touch the water. So for this, I'm going to have equals, I'll have the cell before, minus five for five millimeters and I can stretch this down awesome um, this took my um, this took my underlines and moved them on all so I have to redo my underlines let's set it to no borders and now we can put a top and a bottom We can do again. We can actually put. Oh, never mind. Um, let's put our bottom. And for here, we can give it a top and a bottom. Golden. All right. So we have one more thing to add to this table to make it look the way we want it to. <clears throat> Take a look at column B. Um. So we have our candle number is aligned left, but all of our candle numbers are aligned right. So this kind of makes it unclear where the numbers are. Same thing for raw candle length. It could just as easily be one as it is 70. So I want all the headers to be aligned right, just like the numbers. So all columns except for the first. I want the first to stay aligned left because it gives a nice organization um, for the beginning of our chart, but um, the rest of them we want the text, the header we want to be aligned with the numbers themselves. So we align them to the right. And now we have all the features that we really want to have on our spreadsheet. We have bold headers. The headers are aligned with the entries to the column. Our group names um, are in merged cells. They're centered vertically and their text wraps so we can read the whole thing. And we have these borders to, um, to cut up our table by groups. So these are important features that your spreadsheet must have for when you turn it in. Okay, this is what we want to look like. Of course, you'll have these uh, filled in but I'm not going to burn the candles here with you all. I'm going to let you all do it yourself. So this is what we want our table to look like once we take our data. And once we take our times, we'll put them in here. And then our data table will be full and presentable and beautiful. Anyway, that concludes this video and the walkthrough or the um, incomplete walkthrough of the procedure.